What's up, everybody? It's Professor Reiko here, continuing on with our uh, discussion of dilutive earnings per share and how uh, all of our different dilutive securities affect diluted earnings per share. So we're going to continue on with this one uh, video looking over convertible preferred stock. All right. So it says up the top that the convertible securities are shares of preferred stock. Our shares of preferred stock, sorry, no reduction is made from net income for preferred dividends. And that means in dilutive, because remember, we've already subtracted them in basic earnings per share. Okay. Uh, the question we have to ask ourselves for dilutive is, do I need to add it back? Okay. So I've got this chart here, and I'm not going to read through everything. So if you need to pause it and just kind of look through this for a second, that's fine. But I think it helps keep everything straight, especially when you're doing homework and stuff like that and studying. Uh, so it's here if you need it. Uh, but the, if you look at the top two, I mean, you basically kind of break it right down the middle here. All right. So notice the top two are non-convertible, okay, which means they don't affect dilutive. So this would, uh, they only affect basic earnings per share. All right. So the key things that we're comparing here is cumulative versus non-cumulative. All right. So remember, if it's cumulative, let's start with that. Remember, we always subtract the dividend regardless of whether it is declared or not. All right. And then up here for non-cumulative only has a numerator effect if it is actually declared during the year. OK, so that's important. That's the, when we're doing basic earnings per share. I remember I said when we do basic, you're asking yourself, one, is there a preferred stock dividend and do I need to subtract it? OK, well, the key thing is cumulative versus non-cumulative declared versus not. So cumulative is the easy one. Always subtract it. Non-cumulative, it has to be declared. So make sure you keep that straight. All right. So remember, these are non-convertible. So there's no additional changes over here because it's not a convertible bond. Therefore, it would not affect diluted earnings per share. I'm sorry, it's not a convertible preferred stock. Therefore, it would not ha have any effect on diluted earnings per share. So only basic when they're non-convertible. All right, so down here, notice they're both convertible. Okay, so these two right here are the same as these two up here because basic is uh, based all we were concerned about in basic earnings per share is cumulative, non-cumulative. All right. So that says the exact same thing as the top part. All right. Our difference is over here. OK, so it's kind of wordy here. Uh, but remember what we're saying here, if they're convertible, we're saying at the beginning of the year. All right. They would have been converted into common stock. So if they were converted into common stock, there never would have been a dividend in the first place. OK. So we need to add it back if it was taken out in basic. So you can read through there. It's kind of wordy there. But your bottom line is if it's convertible, that means we have to look at it and dilute it. If it's convertible and the dividend was subtracted in basic, then we're going to add it back in dilutive because we're saying it never would have happened in the first place because it would have all been converted into common stock. So that's the main thing to keep straight there. Uh, so really kind of focus in. So if you can really focus in on what to do in basic earnings per share, that that's your guide. Uh, for dilute, if it was if it was subtracted, add it back. If we did nothing, do nothing. All right. So let's look at an example here. The uh, we have five hundred thousand eight percent cumulative convertible preferred stock. All right. So remember, cumulative tells me I must subtract it in basic. Notice if you read through the rest of us, you you notice it doesn't say anything about the dividend being declared or paid or whatever, and it doesn't have to because cumulative tells us that we are going to subtract it in our basic earnings per share. Convertible tells us that we are going to add it back in dilutive earnings per share. Okay. All right. So it's convertible into 40,000 shares. Uh, so, you know, that's the total amount of shares we're dealing with. All right. They had 100,000 shares outstanding during the year. So we don't need to calculate our weighted average shares for basic. Net income was 111. Tax rate is 30. The tax rate is irrelevant in this, part, in this problem. All right. So basic and dilutive. So remember, the first thing we need to do is determine what our preferred stock dividend is. So let's just do that uh, first. So my preferred stock dividend, remember, preferred stock dividend, if you go back to the equity chapter, we did a video on that, you're taking the total par value outstanding of the preferred stock times the percent. All right, and, we'll multiply, and that will be 40,000. All right, so we don't need to multiply that times 12 twelves because the dividend is just the dividend. It doesn't matter when it's declared. The only issue would be is this preferred stock was issued during the year. Uh, maybe the dividend would have, you know, maybe there wasn't a dividend and it'll happen next year when they declare it. Okay, so you just have to say, you know, you don't even really have to focus on that. If it was declared uh, after it was uh, the preferred stock was out, was issued and outstanding, then you would have the dividend. Okay, so the date is less 
uh, important on dealing with this. It will affect your uh, denominator, though, because remember, that's still weighted average. So uh, basic, remember, basic is net income minus the preferred stock dividend over weighted average shares outstanding. All right, so we got 71 over 100,000. So basic is 71 cents per share. All right, so dilutive, I'm still doing my numerator and denominator effects. All right, so numerator, it, we've already calculated. So remember, the dividend is 40,000. Now remember, we are adding it back because now we're saying if it was converted into common stock, we never would have had the dividend. So we had subtracted in basic. Remember, basic is based on actual. But now we have to add it back in dilutive, which basically zeroes it out. OK, but that's what we want because there would not have been a dividend had it all been converted. All right. So our denominator is 40,000 shares. This is weighted average. So technically, this would be times 12 twelfths. Uh, my per share is 40,000 over 40,000, which equals one dollar. Now, look, this is, oops, sorry, $1, and that is greater than 71 cents, so it is not diluted, okay? So you have to actually get to this step in your convertible bonds and preferred stock to see if it's included or not. Uh, so if that number, the per share effect, is greater than basic, it is not diluted, okay? Now, let's just say you forget that, and you say, all right, well, let's just come down here, and, you know, you forget that rule, and you start with your basic, which is 71000 over 100,000, and you add in your 40,000 on top, and your 40,000 in the denominator, you're going to end up getting 79 cents. Okay, so that should definitely be a red flag to you, because remember, dilutive earnings per share is always less than basic, so you can't have uh, a number greater than that. So if you forget the step, this step, uh, this part right here, and you do that, then you should automatically say, okay, wait, that, that doesn't need to be included. So in this problem, you can read this paragraph right here. It's obviously greater, so it's not dilutive. And so it's not even considered in the computation of earnings per share, meaning for this problem, all you would have was basic earnings per share. Okay. So just keep that in mind. I like doing that in this example, uh, just so you can see that and make sure you remember if it's not dilutive, it is, you know, it does not affect diluted earnings per share. All right. So this is convertible preferred stock. The main thing to keep straight with this is the cumulative, non-cumulative, convertible, non-convertible, and how that affects basic and dilutive earnings per share. All right. So that's diluted. Uh, I'm sorry. That's convertible preferred stock. We're going to switch gears in the next one and look at like stock warrants and options and things like that and how we handle those and how they affect diluted earnings per share. All right. So I hope you're going to enjoy it. I'll see you next time.